Around the same time as the Islamic conquest in the Middle East and the decline of the Mayan Empire in Central America around 1,200 years ago, it's believed that the first people ever stepped foot onto the island of Madagascar. Now, I'm sure everyone's heard of the island of Madagascar for its extreme biodiversity and just overall amazing climate. But what a lot of people don't think about when they think of the island is the people that inhabit it and how truly unique they are. It's believed that the first group of explorers to ever come across the island and settle there numbered no more than 100 people, even though today the island boasts a population of over 22 million. This means that the average person from that original group of settlers has about 220 thousand descendants alive today on the island. For comparison, around 400 years ago, the Mayflower, which was one of the first ships to bring colonists to North America from England, had around 100 people also, and today about 20 million people have partial descent from those original colonists. But what makes the people of Madagascar truly unique is where these settlers originally came from. Around half of the original settlers came from Southeast Asia, specifically the island of Borneo, and the other half came from the east coast of Africa, or the modern-day country of Mozambique. Although genetic admixture varies greatly across different regions of the island, the average Malagasy person is a sort of hybrid fusion between Black and Asian, or as we like to call them, Blasian. So for instance, although former president of Madagascar, Andri Rajolina, looks very East Asian in his appearance, in my opinion. The current Malagasy president, Harry, oh boy, Harry Rajao Narimam Pianina, looks rather Indian. Bantu African DNA tends to be clustered on the west side of Madagascar, closest to Africa, and Southeast Asian DNA tends to be clustered around the east and central parts of Madagascar. But what's super interesting about the people of Madagascar is they actually speak an Austronesian language, meaning that their language is actually more closely related to that of Indonesia or Malaysia than the rest of Africa, even though it does have a substantial Bantu influence, which is probably why their words are so freaking long and hard to pronounce. I mean, here's a list of the top 10 largest cities. Yikes. However, Southeast Asians and Bantus are not the only groups of people that have genetic influence on the island. For instance, traders from the Arabian Peninsula, South Asia, and East Asia over the past thousand years or so have traversed around the island and left their genetic input as well. In recent times, Europeans, such as the Portuguese and the French, have also intermixed into the population of the island, with the island of Nose Baraja, or St. Marie, just off the coast of the west side of Madagascar, having a population that has a strong European genetic component. Now, even though the people of Madagascar are generally seen as just one ethnic group, the Malagasy, by outside observers, they're actually composed of a few dozen ethnic groups, with the most dominant one being the Marina people from central Madagascar. They actually have some of the highest percentage of Southeast Asian DNA, which is why some of its members, like Andrei Rajulina, look very Southeast Asian looking, as opposed to people from the rest of the country that look very African or mixed. The people of Madagascar are overwhelmingly observants of the Christian religion, even though a huge percentage of them, up to 40 or 50 percent, also incorporate elements of their indigenous faith into the religion. However, just on the very northern tip of Madagascar, there tends to be a lot more Muslims there because of conversion done by Islamic sailors for the past thousand years or so. Now, it kind of sucks that only 2 percent of the population of Madagascar can speak English, and I'm guessing even a smaller percentage of that 2% has internet access, and I'm guessing even a smaller percentage of that percentage regularly goes on YouTube, but maybe someone from Madagascar can see my video and confirm whether the things I've said are accurate or not. Now, just a few hundred miles off the coast of Madagascar are another set of very demographically unique islands referred to as the Mascarene Archipelago. 
The Mascarene Archipelago consists of the island nation of Mauritius, as well as the island territory of Reunion, which actually belongs to France, as well as the island of Rodriguez, which is a part of Mauritius. You might recognize Mauritius as the only place in the world where the now extinct dodo bird used to live, but right now we're going to be focusing on Reunion. Now, none of these islands had an indigenous population when the first European colonizers arrived there about 400 years ago, and the islands switched hands between different powers such as Portugal, France, and the UK for about 100 years. Reunion actually ended up in the hands of the French, and they started importing colonists there, as well as a few slaves from Africa, India, and East Asia. So today, around one-fourth of the population is European or French, one-fourth is Indian, and the rest are mostly mixed-race people. The mixed-race or Creole people of Reunion tend to be very unique in that they're around 52% European, 22% Indian, 21% East Asian, and 5% African. Apparently, interracial marriage is very common on the island, and it's actually illegal in France to take a census on race or ethnicity, so it's very hard to quantify just exactly what percentage of the population is what. The Chagos Archipelago is a bit further away, about a thousand miles, and generally isn't considered to be a part of Mascarenes, but it has a very similar history. The Chagos Archipelago was actually juggled around between a few colonial hands before it was actually gained by the British. And although it had no indigenous population, the now native Chagosians are mostly descended from African slaves as well as Europeans and Indians. The few thousand Chagosians that lived in the Chagos Archipelago were actually expelled to Mauritius and the United Kingdom in the mid-20th century, and the territory was renamed the British Indian Ocean Territory. Which, if you ask me, the British Indian Ocean Territory is a lot more boring of a name than the Chagos Archipelago, and I'll, I'll probably do a video on that sometime in the future. Also nearby to the Mascarene Islands is the country of Seychelles, which is another multiracial country with origins primarily in Africa, Europe, and India. What's interesting to note is even though some of these countries are separated by thousands of miles, they all have a common French Creole culture, and they all speak French Creole languages, which can be classified as Bourbonnais Creole. As it turns out, people don't really like living on an island in the middle of nowhere, though, so the area has a huge diaspora, mostly to the United Kingdom, France, Australia, and much more recently, the United States. So hey, I know it's extremely unlikely that anyone from Madagascar will ever see this video, but if you know someone from Madagascar or the Mascarene Islands, be sure to share this video with them and see if what I said is accurate or not. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.